Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall doing a tournament report for a recent event that I went to. I brought my Skaven over to Flipside Gaming in East Greenbush, New York. Uh, it was a single day tournament, three rounds. Uh, this was the last weekend on GHB 2018. Uh, we had about 10 participants, I believe, and it was using Realm Artifacts and Realm Rules, but not the Realm Spell Lores. So we did have like Realmscape features, Realm Commands, all of that stuff, but uh, just not the Realm Spells uh, in the Spell Lore. So the list I brought, uh, I took a Grey Seer on Screaming Bell with Death Frenzy, an Arch Warlock, his spell was more and more war warp power, and he had Masterful Scavenger to give me ep extra warp stone tokens. A uh, Vermin Lord Warp Seer with Snout Gravel Robes that uh, gave me extra battle shock immunity. And I took a Claw Lord with Brutal Fury. Uh, and then for my troops, I took a unit of 40 clan rats, two units of 20 clan rats, a unit of 20 storm vermin, 15 scryer acolytes, six warp lock gisales, and the warp lightning vortex to round it out to exactly 2,000 points. Um, so the general game plan was to clog up the board with clan rats and use a combination of uh, you know, Snout Gravel Robes, the Vermin Lord Warp Seer, and the Screaming Bell to prevent Battle Shock to uh, do extra clogging of the pipes, and then use the Acolytes, Gisales, and Storm Vermin as sort of a counterpunch force, as well as using um, the Warp Lightning Vortex and various other magic to do some damage to my opponent at range. So round one, I faced off against Gloom Spike Gits uh, and played Places of Arcane Power. Um, I don't remember what the realm was. It didn't do anything that was significant. Um, the big thing here was that my opponent really didn't have um, heroes that were going to be able to effectively grab those objectives. Um, he had mostly very slow moving heroes, uh, apart from, uh, one hero on the, I forget what it's called, Mangler Squig, I believe? Giant Squig? I don't know. Big Squig Ridey guy. Um, on my first turn, I basically just rolled up, uh, my... Screaming Bell onto one objective and my Vermin warp, warp Seer onto a second objective and they just really sat there the whole game. Um, I was able to stick my Warp Lightning Vortex on all of his five wound heroes and slowly whittle them down. And the uh, guy on Squig, he got eventually knocked out, I believe just mostly by shooting um, he'd never even really made it to the objective, um, just kind of got whacked pretty hard. Um, overall plan worked pretty well. Um, he tried to kind of like alpha block me with a big unit of Stabas, uh, you know, right in my face with uh, Hand of Gork on uh, top of turn one because he outdropped me. Um, but that really just kind of gave me the opportunity to charge my Screaming Bell into them and get in range of the objective. And from there, I mean, my Scryer Acolytes did serious work in this game. I believe they had one round of shooting where they did 29 damage, if, they, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so that was a lot. Uh, my Gisales also did tons of work. The Warp Lightning Vortex really tied up a lot of his guys, killed a ton of dudes off. So um, I eventually did not only get a major victory, but I tabled my opponent in this game as well. Um, and I also had like a whole, my unit of 40 clan rats um, 
I really didn't need, and they just sort of sat on the sidelines and didn't get moved just because I didn't feel like moving a unit of 40 clan rats if I didn't need to. Um, so basically, I, I this was also effectively playing 200 points down, to be honest. Uh, not to be boastful or anything, but it was basically an 1,800-point list um, against 2,000, and it was a really decisive victory. Game number two was up against a really interesting corn list playing Shifting Objectives. Um, and once again, I don't remember what the Realmscape feature was or what realm we were in. It didn't really have any effect on anything. Uh, so the interesting things about this particular corn list, um, he took a unit of three Skull Cannons um, and... Uh, basically, like all of, of the Shadespire Warbands, uh, a Bloodthirster, and uh, like all the Slaughter Priests and a Blood Secretor, all of those things. And um, so, very interesting list, MSU style sort of list. Um, lots of generation of Blood Tithe points. Um, the cannons were a really interesting ad. A lot of people kind of uh, ditched them as soon as the FAQ came out saying that Wrathmongers didn't buff them. And they're still pretty scary even without the uh, Wrathmongers buffing them. They still can potentially do a lot of damage. They're pretty accurate. Taking them in a unit of three is pretty powerful. Um... Uh, my opponent won priority uh, on turn one, but he totally whiffed on his alpha strike. All three of his cannons failed and didn't kill anything at all, and he got his uh, bloodthirster across the table, and that basically whiffed as well. So on my first turn, my acolytes immediately moved in, bombed the crap out of his bloodthirster. I pop the warp lightning vortex over his um skull cannons advanced up my guys and um it was actually a pretty tight game um you know my opponent was pretty dejected after he you know the top of turn one really not going his way and the bloodthirster coming off quickly but um it was a pretty tight game um there were definitely a few moments where I thought uh, that things were not looking so good, but overall, uh, just the power of you know the warp lightning vortex, the scryer acolytes, the Gisales, um, doing crazy amounts of work, and um, the storm vermin as well, also getting a lot of work done. I believe in this game, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, uh, one thing to note in this particular game, uh, Vermin Lord Warpseer, he is not good in combat. He is just really disappointing every time I do that. So um, that was a bit of a miss for me. Uh, ended up being a major victory. Uh, really fun game. Um, and this was against uh, Josh from Masterpiece Miniatures. Um, so definitely go check out their channel as well. They do some great battle reports. Um, so there we go on to game three and I was two and zero oh at this point and game three I'm facing off against legions of Nagash uh, featuring Nagash and you know all the friends uh, ethereal vampire lord on zombie dragon a horde of chain rasps a horde of um, grim ghast reapers and two units of dire wolves and I believe that was basically his whole list. Uh, we were playing Starstrike, um, and we got uh, a Realmscape feature that limited magic and shooting to 18 inches, so my Gisales did nothing, and a lot, it, it, and the Warp Lightning Vortex had some limited use because I couldn't shoot it out as far as I wanted to. Um, so... Uh, you know, I'm actually incorrect on what I actually typed on the slide here. It was actually bottom of one that uh, the Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon took out my Acolytes. I inadvertently left a hole open in the backfield for the Vampire Lord to jump back there and 
uh, Alpha Strike on those guys. So that sucked. My Acolytes were out of the game turn one. My Vortex didn't really do anything in this game of note. Um, so I spent a lot of out of the game really kind of playing cat and mouse with all of my rats. Um, just trying to get as many bodies onto objectives as possible and holding objectives as long as I could. Um, considering that overall, um, I had a lot more bodies on the board than my opponent did. Um, and I should also note that the, the board itself, while it was very cool, was very much against me. It was basically like a big castle with a huge wall in the middle and it did have a doorway uh, in that wall for uh, me to get guys through, but it was only maybe like, you know, three inches wide or so. So I was only able to get very few rats through it. I was able to shoot my unit of 40 through that door to grab the objective on my opponent's side of the board for a while. Um, overall, things were very back and forth. I felt like I was on the back foot the whole game. Uh, came down to bottom of turn five. My opponent had a long bomb charge into um, an objective to try and grab that. He ended up rolling an 11 with his Grimgast Reapers. Got all the guys there that he needed to get there and um, ended up losing the match by one victory point, basically off of a bad long bomb charge on my end. So um, that's just sort of my rough memory of the game. It was a couple of weeks now, so um, it, this was definitely a very interesting game. Um, I was uh, not nearly as afraid of Nagash as I once was after actually experiencing it in this game. Um, he's good, but he's not that outrageously good um, that I'm terrified of him with Skaven anyway. So overall, I took second in the tournament. Um, big highlights to note. Um, the Warp Lightning Vortex was definitely an all-star in two out of my three games. It was doing tons and tons of damage for me. Um, my Scryer Acolytes also did tons of damage. Um, the Snout Grovel Robes, I really loved that effect. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily take that artifact again. I'm more inclined to take either a Plague Furnace or a second Screaming Bell uh, to get that extra uh, no battle shock aura around him. Um, the Claw Lord, I really only used his ability a couple of times, and it was usually kind of overkill, so I think he would probably get cut from the list, even if I'm going to continue to use Storm Vermin. Um, the Warp Seer in general, I kind of felt like was a bit overhyped. Um, he was not as strong as um, I would have hoped he would have been. Just wasn't really like that big of a role in most games. Uh, now, Skaven's big strength, I think, is really having very powerful magic. And I played against Korn, and I played against Nagash, which are two armies that just deny your magic left and right. And I still got some good use out of my magic, and despite that, I still performed really well and kind of got around it. The other strengths of the army really... Uh, propped up uh, that one particular deficiency, which I think is, in general, one of the big strengths of Skaven right now is you can build a pretty well-balanced army, and if you know one of the legs is knocked out, you still have a whole bunch of other legs to still stand on. So I really um, I had a lot of things that I liked from this list. It was a good learning experience. Uh, nice to take the second overall, and um, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, great experience in general. Definitely would head over to Flipside again for another tournament next time they have one. Um, and uh, I think that's about it for now. Um, I did take pictures to do battle reports 
Um, but I decided to just kind of go with a tournament report sort of format on this one. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this rather than going through like a slideshow of the battle reports. Um, I feel like it, what I really want to get across rather than the blow by blow is you know how armies performed, how units performed. So let me know uh, what you guys think of this sort of format of reporting and I will see you all later.